my fellow Amazonians, uh, the great people of Amazonia, my fellow citizens, it's been a long time since I, I made a life address. And I thought it was important today for me uh, to speak to you directly on a wide range of issues. Uh, first, let me uh, wish happy Father's Day to all the brave Amazonian men and to thank all the women who have made it possible for us to be great dads. I thank all the fathers who continue to sacrifice, uh, all of our compatriots detained illegally in the prisons of Cameroon, all the brave fighters who have been in trenches for the past five years in the defense of our country and our people. On behalf of our nation, I extend my gratitude to all Amazonians for the sacrifices that you people continue to make and the pain that you continue to endure to ensure that sooner than later, the beast that walked into our land more than 50 years ago is not only thrown out, but banished for eternity and making it impossible for it to ever cross our borders again. It has been a long journey and we have achieved a lot. We have uh, suffered also a lot of setbacks. As I have said repeatedly, I will always remind our people of the setbacks we have so that we should constantly remind ourselves why we had such setbacks. But we are gaining momentum. We have been able in the past weeks to demonstrate our capability to resist Cameroon in different fields and we will continue to do so. Yesterday, I met with uh, Dr. Akwanga, the chairman of the APLM. We met to continue our consultation on how to take our struggle forward. We are at a very critical juncture in our struggle. And it requires a lot of foresight. It requires a lot of mastery of how to deal with the enemy, the international system, and the different actors within the Ambazonian liberation space. And it has been my wish that these bilateral consultations will narrow the gap between the Ambazonian Governing Council and other movements and find areas of common interest. And I think in our discussion in the past seven months with the APLM leadership, we are narrowing down the differences. We are identifying areas of convergence. We are talking about strategies I mean, strategies that will take us from this level to the next. We've identified the mistakes of the past and we are, are committed to ensure that we do not walk backward again. I'm grateful to Dr. Akwanga for taking the pain to fly over to Oslo for this meeting. And on behalf of the Ambazonian Governing Council, I want to thank the APLM for making this possible. I also want to thank the mission of Norway and its leadership for the reception they granted uh, Dr. Akwanga. It showed that we can bridge our differences. We might not forget about it. We might not be able to solve all of them.
but that for the interests of the Amazonian people, we can bridge those differences and work together in areas of common interest to advance the common interests of the Amazonian people, which is terminating the occupation of our country. Consultations with the APLM will continue uh, through bilateral and multilateral processes. And I can assure the Amazonian people that we are making uh, progress. In the next few hours, the Vice President of the Amazonian Governing Council, Dr. Julius Ni, will be landing in Oslo for consultation tomorrow. We will be meeting to consult on a couple of issues and we will be briefing the Amazonian people uh, with time. A few weeks ago, I also met with the Vice President of the CDM. We consulted on areas of common interest, post-Toronto developments, post-London developments, and post Stuttgart developments. And I can assure the Amazonian people and the Amazonian Governing Council that Toronto was not a waste of time. And that after Toronto, there has been a lot of work, a lot of bilateral, multilateral consultations with the groups that were in Toronto and with the groups that were not in, in Toronto. It is my hope, and I know it's the hope of every Amazonian, that we are going to, together, establish a common framework for negotiation that is acceptable across the board to all the movements that is going to provide you know, a framework through which there can be proportionate representation where we can identify the issues at bar and be able to get the help of experts uh, to help us anytime La Republic is committed to negotiating itself out of our country. Consultations with the CDN uh, continues in good faith and we will continue to strengthen that, that relationship for the interests of the Amazonian people. Um, I also met with the director of uh, the Cambodian Peace and Conflict uh, Institute. I did announce that it was a very important meeting. Before that meeting, there had been a capacity building a conference in Cambodia and the Amazonian Governing Council was represented by its spokesperson, Capo Daniel. Other movements were present, including uh, Vice President Yerema of the IGK. Uh, during the Cambodia uh, retreat, there were bilateral consultations between the various groups. And after that, there has been a uh, consultation also. We are exploring different avenues to ensure that we are equipped with the knowledge, with the support scheme from different institutions, governments and non-governmental organizations to help Amazonia when Cameroon will commit to negotiation. Be reminded on why this is important. As far back as 1961, why Cameroon received all support from France in drafting its La Constitution Federale. Amazonian representatives and the Amazonian government then did not get enough support to help it navigate the complex negotiation process which it was supposed to enter as per resolution 1608. We don't want to repeat that mistake and we will make sure we are equipped not only with the knowledge, we're gonna understand the stakeholders the international system where we can seek help and support to help us at that particular moment. Uh, we are making huge progress. A uh, couple of years ago, we were far apart. I mean, the various movements, the various leaders were far apart. We did not even agree on the issue of negotiation. As time has evolved, we have been equipped with the necessary knowledge and capacity to understand not only the complexity of the process, but to understand the actors and the institutions that we may be dealing with both at the domestic level of Cameroon and the international level. So Amazonia is up to speed 
and the repeat of 1961 is never gonna happen. Your country is free, you have an army that is on the march in defense of the homeland and in defense of our territorial integrity. My fellow countrymen and women, uh, when independence was restored, when our international border was demarcated in 1919, it was in preparation for the independence of our country. An established government, territorial integrity, and that only the Ambazonian people through its duly elected representatives, whether through customary institutions like chiefdoms and fondoms, on Gumba House, which is like the parliament, only through those institutions shall laws be made that will operate within the territory of Ambazonia and any other territory subject to our jurisdiction. For 60 years, our laws have been made in Cameroon. Strange laws, alien rule, and they have been imposed on us at a very, very high price. That is why when we say independence, we mean independence. Independence in formulating our policies, deciding our kind of economic model, our political our system, a form of taxation. That Cameroon will never again establish institutions within our country, regulate those institutions, make laws that will be operational in our country. We have put a halt on all number plates issued by Cameroon or SEMAC number plates. All cars within Ambazonia must make sure that they respect this law. Today our forces arrested a couple of drivers who are still violating this law. Be reminded, my people, these are not arbitrary actions. We have taken five years to be able to establish such a rule. We've given Ambazonians enough time to understand the concept of independence. We have made sure that we do not take radical actions that will undermine the comprehension of our people about what we are doing. We have made sure that we use soft power in terms of education, explanation, micro steps before we have moved to taking bold actions. The enemy that burns down our villages and our cities, the enemy that is committing genocide in our country cannot regulate our society. I call on all drivers to understand it is not simply an act of defiance against the occupier. It is an act in reclaiming your right in the land of your birth to live under systems that are established by your own country. It is a collective rejection of the genocidal regime and its politics and policies within our country. Every policy we put in place, every rule, every law is complex. The liberation tax was not simply about taxation in terms of getting revenue. Only the people that controls the territory has the right to impose taxes. So it was a statement of intent reminding Cameroon that we control the land and a foreign country has no right within the territorial space of Ambazonia
to impose taxes, collect revenue, and use that revenue to arm itself to continue the perpetration of crimes against humanity, war crimes, and genocide in Amazonia. It, was, it wasn't simply an act of revenue collection. It was a statement of intent, an act of defiance, collective resistance against alien and foreign dominion. I know you are going to face challenges. Every step we take is going to be a challenge. The act of the Declaration of Independence itself is a huge challenge. The decision to rise up and go to the street with olive branches was an investment, a risk. The act of picking up arms in the defense of your land, your people, and your ideals isn't simply an act of defiance, but a challenge to yourself. And if we will have to be free completely we, will, we must continue to make these sacrifices. We must continue to take these baby steps to reclaim our territory issue by issue. And I am glad that in many cities across our territory, our people are dishing away these number plates issued by your own murderers. My fellow countrymen and women, in 1991, a couple of lawyers led by Professor Carson Anyanwe drafted a constitutional proposal which they tabled to Yaoundé, appealing to Yaoundé to engage in constitutional discussions on ensuring that the identity of Amazonia was preserved. It was rejected. Two years later, four lawyers, Professor Carson Anyangwe, Baristai Kontamela, Benjamin Etwe, Dr. Simon Munzu, assembled all Amazonians to Boya to discuss the grievances which we have had since 1961 against Cameroon and to come out with a common position on how to move forward. In 1994, three lawyers led by Professor Kassan Anyangwe Baristai Kontangelat, Simon Munzu, summon every Amazonian again to Bamenda after Yaoundé rejected the Boya Declaration that put together our grievances and avenues of redress. Under the rain, under heavy fire, we assembled, ended Bamenda with the Bamenda Proclamation. Five years ago, the same lawyers went on to the street to demand the reformation of our legal system, the repeat of a failed process that started as far back as 1991. Teachers later joined them. They were battered on the street. They were humiliated. The having us of our legal tradition were treated like lamb to the slaughter, harassed, tortured by criminal police officers from the land of the occupier. These lawyers, their actions inspired millions who, like in 1994, said it is time, it is time for our people to have a country of their own. The bravery of these lawyers inspired millions across the globe. And we rose up 
across different capitals in the Western Hemisphere. Some were picked up and jailed. Teachers whose only crime had been a rejection of a colonial curriculum and a language of instruction antithetical to what we have been used to were beaten up, thrown into jails, thrown into exile. The bravery of Tassa, when he said, by Monday we will know who is in charge, was an act of defiance that will go down the annals of Ambazonian history as an act that inspired millions across the globe, gave teachers reason to be happy about their profession. The brutality of the system, the animosity, the hate and arrogance turned simple teachers and legal minds to political activists, to leaders of a struggle against tyranny of an alien system in our country. For the past five years, the millions who were inspired by the bravery of these lawyers have not given up, if not blinked. Thousands are locked up, professors kidnapped from Nigeria, deported to the capital of our occupying country, passed through kangaroo trials, treated like pigs, detained under inhumane and degrading conditions. Subjected to harassment, our finest minds locked up in perpetuity. The brave men and women who rose up on the street carrying Dane guns do not only fight for Amazonians' independence. The fight in remembrance of the heroism of these brave men who with their weak stood on our streets to defy a system that has murdered so many. The fight for ideals, the fight for this bravery, the fight for this single act of defiance that our teachers put forward and our lawyers put forward. Apart from the kind of legal system and educational system which will be established at independence, the underlying reasons for which these men have spent five years in the bushes is because of these single acts of defiance by teachers and by lawyers. And if these uneducated people, and if those detained, those subjected to humiliation, have not blinked, and the act of some lawyers to walk across the Mongol and to take part in an illegal act for purposes of benefit is a great betrayal to the sacrifices and pain of all those detained and all those still fighting. They want peace and they are willing to turn corners to walk back all the way on the carcasses of all those who have fallen to beg the butcher to integrate them we are here to remind them we are the generation for peace with justice and we are the obstacle to any ambazonia any groups of individuals who breaks the law of the land walks back into the arms of the butchers to rewrite the story of General Ivo Paatasan who stood up in defiance and despite incarceration have not blinked. I remind these lawyers we will arrest you No matter where you are, I have given firm instructions to our forces. All of those lawyers who have taken part 
in that single act of treachery, you are excommunicated from the territory of Ambazonia. Anywhere we find you, we will take you into custody and you will pay a heavy price for the betrayal of all those who have fallen and all those whose liberty has been taken away from them for the past five years. My fellow countrymen and women, I want to thank our forces in the great state of Mezam, especially in Bamenda, for putting up a great fight. The enemy took the land, exploited the resources, and they still want to throw our trash. Independence means independence. No foreign company whose sole interest is the accumulation of profit and shipping this profit out of Amazonia to make investment in other countries, to take part in any community activities. The trash in our city will be collected by our people. I encourage every Amazonian to be innovative. All landlords, dig holes behind your houses and dump your trash inside. Trash is no longer free. We are going to develop programs and projects to monetize trash, to transform trash into renewable energy, into manure that you can use to grow your crops. We will begin with the provision of education, information that will help our people self-help. And we will make the requisite investment in the future to ensure that our entrepreneurs are able to use the existing technology and to develop new technology to ensure that the trash in our cities is monetized and transformed in a way that can benefit our citizens. Take ownership of your lives. Take ownership of your cities. Take ownership of your country and your independence. The resistance continues, my people. The armed resistance is the only way we are going to gain our freedom. And I thank the bravest generals on the ground, General No Pity, for the foreign incursion and retaliation for the murder of our citizens. By ensuring that the enemy has no place to plan and scheme to brutalize our people, we make them to understand there is no hiding place for those who murder Amazonians. And I encourage all other defense groups and fighters to make sure that the borders of Amazonia are extended in terms of resistance to ensure we can stop them before they ever move into our land to burn our homes, murder and rape our girls. I thank the seven Qatars for dismantling the checkpoint in Bamenda, the Tabuqui funds for the bravery in attacking another checkpoint, the Amazonian Defense Forces for the deployment rapid deployment in, in our law and in Bamenda City. I also thank General Nhi uh, and the other fighters in Boya standing off of brave and all our fighters in Bui, those in Fako, those in Dian. Amazonians say thank you. Thank you from the depth of your heart for being able to rise up on the same spot that lawyers blink and teachers with no backbone retreated. Amazonians will remember you for the rest of our lives and your stories, your bravery will be written in all the biggest encyclopedias talking about our freedom. Thank you very much. My fellow Amazonians, I call upon you to continue to commit and rededicate your life to the freedom of your country. I can assure you based on what I know, both at the international system and the commitment of our forces that the enemy is defeated the enemy is tired and very soon the system will crumble we are having discussions on what to do we know what to do and our people should be motivated our people should not give up our people should not fall into the trap of the enemy both domestic and foreign and our people must continue to support our forces and also rise up 
in all the neighborhoods to identify the enemy, chase them out of our country. This is a collective struggle we should never be left in the hands of our forces alone. And talking about our forces, every war has permissions and prohibitions. Every war has permissions and prohibitions. And though we live in a world where there is maximum anarchy, there are rules and regulations that govern the conduct of individuals and groups of individuals in times of peace and in times of war. In classical times, wars were ruthless without rules. In modern times, thanks to the pain of war, rules have been put in place to regulate the conduct of soldiers and actors and states and institutions. And post-conflict, ad hoc and permanent criminal systems have been established to ensure that those who violate the rules of war are brought to justice. Not simply for punitive purposes, but for purposes of accountability. Because you carry a gun doesn't give, it, give you the power to murder, to steal, to harass and terrorize. If there is one reason why we rose up against Cameroon, it's because of his Kale Kale, unnecessary roadblocks. Bribery and corruption are those checkpoints, killing of our civilians. We rose up to dismantle these institutions of hate and terror. And we must conduct ourselves with high sense of responsibility. Post-World War II constitutions of many countries talks about the protection of human dignity because of the scorch of war, the pain that was inflicted on millions, six million Jews, gypsies and others, murdered millions of soldiers, civilians, cities bombed to the ground. And after World War II, the German constitution in its article 16 talks about the protection of human dignity. The Japanese constitution does the same because human dignity is sacrosanct, is critical for human development. And we must uphold the dignity of our people. We must demonstrate that we are better than Cameroon. While we thank our soldiers and praise them for their bravery, I understand the difficult circumstances under which they operate and the lack of proportionality in terms of the balance of opportunities in dealing with Cameroon. We must conduct ourselves with respect for international rules and norms, customary practices. The Amazonian Defense Forces at its conception made a code of conduct that was binding to all Amazonian Defense Forces and sister forces. Under my leadership and due to the development of the Amazonian struggle, at this particular stage, we consider ourselves a country we consider our forces the army. We must establish rules that govern all of those forces. We know these forces fight in different terrains and different places under different command and control. We have developed the Ambazonian Liberation Forces Code of Conduct that is generic in nature and applies to all the forces. I call upon all the defense groups to read this document carefully, adapt it to their specific requirements, but ensure that soldiers are educated of the prohibitions as well as the permissions. It's good riddance being a good soldier. It's good riddance being remembered as a brave patriot who protected his own people. Never to be remembered as a butcher, never to be remembered as an extortionist, never to be remembered as one who harassed the civilian population. Our primary responsibility as soldiers of the Amazonian War of Liberation 
is to the land and to our people. And we must protect both in equal measure. The code of conduct is extensive. It follows with punitive measures that are applicable during the period of war and after the period of war, including international jurisdictions. There are certain things that we will have to do to demonstrate to the world that we are a country. And these things must be applicable across different defense groups and different political movements. We will continue consulting on these documents. We will make amendments as, as required. But the fundamental premise of this document is inspired by international humanitarian law, laws that apply in times of conflict, international human rights law, laws that apply in times of peace, the Geneva Conventions of 1949 and its additional protocols, and all other customs and practices that have been developed in international uh, criminal courts, the jurisprudence of the ad hoc criminal tribunal for former Yugoslavia, Rwanda, and other domestic uh, jurisdictions that have universal application. So I really want to thank uh, the chairperson who oversaw the drafting and all those who made huge contribution, including luminaries from ground zero. I would ask the defense groups who, who receive these documents to study them and let's continue the conversation. But I ask some Bazonian forces to protect our civilians. I ask some Bazonian forces to ensure that even enemy combatants are, are treated humanely. The luxury we do not have. My fellow countrymen and women, I will be joined here by two brief ladies. Dr. Abu Free Mambo and Madame Kwa Messi, my wife for the past uh, close to 25 years. Uh, welcome, sweetheart, and thank you for accepting to come uh, to join me. It's, it's, it's my honor to be on the same platform with you. And, and I'm honored by your sacrifice and commitment. We've known ourselves since the University of Boya, I think far back as 1994, and we've never separated. Thank you for your dedication. And um, these uh, brave ladies and uh, gentlemen, they drafted the uh, Charter for Women and uh, Children's Rights. After Toronto, a recommendation reached my desk from concerned women about certain actions on the ground that requires a specific uh, charter for the protection of women and children. The code of conduct for our forces spells out areas for the protection of women and children. But because women and children are, are, are vulnerable within a conflict, we have designed a specific charter that, that protects them. Uh, the charter is extensive. Um, be reminded that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, that came into force in 1948, the chairperson of the commission that drafted that Universal Declaration was Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of Delano Roosevelt. It has become a non-binding, emblematic, inspirational, norm-setting document that has inspired binding treaties like the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, this, uh, the Covenant for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, the Convention for the Protection of the Child, the Con uh, Convention for the Protection of Social, Cultural and, and Development Rights. Now, I will present the, the drafters of this charter. Um, with me here today, you have Mercy Kwa. She is uh, one of the drafters of the charter. You have Dr. Brenda of Germany, also one of the drafters. Dr. Abu Free, one of the drafters of the, of the charter. You have uh, the, my NSA, 
uh, Grace Michaels, you have my Deputy Secretary for Foreign Affairs, you have and, and the, the entire process was overseen by the Secretary for Human Rights and Humanitarian Affairs, Comrade Akoson. Happy Father's Day to you, Comrade Akoson, and to the DSS. You also have the cheerleader for the Egg of Sea Finland. You have the, the Secretary for Education for the Amazonian Governing Council and the Secretary General of the Amazonian Governing Council. These were the fine people who worked on this charter. It was uh, debated, it was submitted to the National Council of the Amazonian Governing Council for a second reading and adoption. It was adoption with one simple amendment, a recommendation for the inclusion of the protection of vulnerable children uh, within the Charter. That particular amendment will be factored into the Charter before it is uh, publicized. Thank you, uh, Mesikwa. Thank you very much. I know you have a specific area within this charter that is of interest to you. You have been uh, someone who has shown great interest in different areas. And I will hand over the microphone to you to tell our people more about the charter, specifically on the area of interest, which I, I think is the area of education. Over to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, uh, CIC. Um, I will take the access to education and the personal safety uh, part of the charter. And according to this, uh, all Ambazonian children and alien children living in Ambazonia shall have access to education under the Ambazonian curriculum of education and any acceptable compromise curriculum that will be accepted by the conflicting parties. An Amazonian Education Board under the Department of Education shall work to establish a curriculum of education for Amazonian's children and women during this period of the conflict. There shall be no hindrance of access to quality education provided by Amazonia's education authorities and the safety of children in schools. <coughs> access to schools by international humanitarian right groups and organizations shall be granted to ensure that Amazonia's children are fully provided the best they need to acquire knowledge, ethical values and skills. There shall be pedagogic advice, training, and material support to enhance teaching and learning by teachers and children, respectively, in the institutions. And it shall be guaranteed to provide, it shall be provided to guarantee uh, success. Women and children attending schools shall benefit from the fact that all Amazonians authorized and run schools shall be protected from attack by conflicting parties. And then going to the aspect of uh, personal safety, the safety of Amazonian and alien women and children shall be considered sacred and treated as a high priority and stringent measures shall be undertaken to ensure such safety. There shall be no detonation of bombs among civilians to the extent that they inflict suffering on women and children. There shall be zero tolerance of all forms of persecution, cruel and inhumane treatment of women and children. Thus, women and children shall not be subjected to wrongful imprisonment, shooting, mass arrest, collective punishment, destructive destruction of dwellings and forceful eviction. There shall be no use of dangerous substances that can inflict heavy losses on civilian populations, including defenseless women and children. Women and children shall be compulsory, shall take compulsory lessons on personal safety rules. And lastly, the safety of women and children shall be prioritized in times of active combat 
and there shall be allowance for the evacuation of women and children to refugee settlements as well as healthcare facilities. Women and children shall have a hotline for reporting issues regarding their safety at all times. The mortal remains of, of women and children shall be treated with dignity and buried honorably while taking cultural and traditional specificities into consideration. Women and children shall be given priority services by Ambazonia's liberation transitional governing structures, especially in the domain of safety. These structures shall immediately report any issues concerning the safety and well being of women and children to appropriate officials for immediate attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> thanks a lot. Thank you very much. That has been a, a great work that you people have done. Uh, Dr. Abu Free Mambo, I just watched your show with uh, Comrade Silas. It was exhilarating. And I'm grateful that you're continuing with uh, the interview. I would encourage more of such outings. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you took part in the drafting of the charter, and apart from taking part in such uh, such an endeavor, uh, you have also been engaged uh, in some activities with children, especially in the area of education. I'm not certain I wasn't informed prior if you have chosen any specific area within the charter to elucidate, but I'll hand over the microphone for you to talk broadly or on, in specific terms about any area of the charter of interest to you and our people. Thank you so much, um, CIC, and um, I'm always I'm always happy to, you know, serve and especially when it's I'm being on board with you. So it's always exciting. <laughs> and um, Comrade Mercy, uh, you and I, I think we spoke earlier today. So um, greetings to you. And hey, CIC, happy Father's Day. <laughs> All right. So um, I I'm going to talk a little bit about, well, um, about sexual exploitation, because I, I think that is uh, the area where I am most um, uh, versed and also if there is nobody else to talk about access to health care and sanitation that is my my background when it comes to my my area of study I can also um, dive into that as well but um, I mean we all know that you know children and women are mostly exploited in uh, you know conflict uh, afflicted zones and of course Ambazonia is no different from other you know um, conflict zones so what what the charter what we came up in the charter is uh, it's actually uh, Article Five, which is you know talks more on sexual exploit uh, ex exploitation. So, Article Five, Subsection One explains that women and children shall be protected from sexual exploitation and sexual violence. Secondly, women and children shall have continuous education and sensitization campaigns aimed at. Um, discouraging all forms of sexual violence against women and children. Number three, women and children shall not be subjected to strip searches by security and safety officials in public. In public. However, for security and safety purposes, such, such searches shall be conducted by female officers of special security officers paying respect to the dignity of the woman concerned. In case of such a, such a search, the person in question um, shall be searched, will be informed and duly ascertained as to the reason of such a search. Number four, women and children shall not be paraded naked in public as punishment. Number five, women shall be allowed to freely make their sexual choices as to who they in turn to date or marry and on no occasion shall a woman be forced into marriage or to date a man without her consent number six women and children who are victims of survivors of sexual exploitation shall be provided free counseling services 
medical assistance and um, psychosocial support to lessen the harm and allow for psychological healing. So that is what we have for sexual exploitation. Now onto article six, which is access to health care and sanitation. Number one, women and children. Um, so women and children's rights, quality health care and sanitation services shall upheld all by all shall be upheld by all parties to the conflict. Number two, women and children shall be guaranteed and allowed the right to flow women and children shall be guaranteed and allowed the right to flow of adequate food shelter medical aid clothing for all by all the warring parties number three women and children who cannot afford basic medical care and attention shall be supported as much as possible by the amazonian fighters number four Women and children will benefit from the fact that all medical facilities and establishments, including ambulances, hospitals, clinics, community health centers, shall be protected by all parties to the conflict. And on no occasion shall such facilities be used for active combat. Number five, women and children will have access to humanitarian workers who shall be permitted granted authorization and encouraged to act independently to assist the vulnerable um, women and children. In this light, mobile community clinics named by healthcare professionals who move from place to place to administer health services shall not be harassed. Number eight, all women and children are entitled to proper documentation, enumeration and provision of birth certificates, identification papers, and marriage and death certificates where and when need be. So um, these are all the um, these are all the articles that were done for um, access to healthcare and sanitation as well as um, sexual exploitation. Thank you, CIC. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Free. Thanks, uh, Madam Kwa. I, I, if you people have anything to say, just uh, have the mic again, and uh, I'll make the concluding remarks. Um, Comrade Mercy, do you want to go first? If you have something to say. Oh well, yeah. I well, I just want to say it's a great day. It's a great day for Ambazonia. It's a great day for um our country it's a great day for women and the girl child uh to see uh the egg of sea take such a role this really shows a lot of um responsibility and i am just so proud to be part of this uh charter and just to ensure that our people are being well taken care of and we are actually following the rules you know as opposed to uh the regime the corrupt regime that we are trying to uh be rid of i'm just so happy to be part of this um uh, of what's going on right now as a woman All thank right. you <laughs> thank you comrade mercy me too i am actually excited as you all know i um i run a um uh, an organization called African Girls with the purpose to empower, you know, young girls, not just in Amazonia, but all across Africa. So, um, and I, you know, I, I just actually came from talking with one of my um, workers in, uh, you know, in Amazonia who was telling me about some refugee um, young ladies who are actually desperately in need for, for housing. And so when I see things like these, that the egg of sea is, is is doing it actually gives me purpose right um i know that we um every day we get up and figure out ways that we can you know support our people on ground zero and the initiative this initiative that has been taken by the agos it actually gives me a reason to continue doing what i am doing because i know that we are doing our best to protect 
our women and children and also bring them the necessary um, you know, support that, that they need. So um, kudos to the AGOC. I am a proud, uh, <laughs> I'm a proud um, member of this wonderful organization and um, I will definitely continue to, to support in, in my own way that I can. Thank you so much uh, CIC for your great leadership and, and vision. Thank you, uh, brave ladies. I, I am honored to be on this platform with both of you um, for your work, dedication, and your commitment. Um, at a time when the structures of society have not given women a, a chance, but uh, our war of liberation gives you an opportunity to reshape the society according to your own perspective. I will encourage Ambazonian women um, to join you people, to join the Amazonian Governing Council, to make sure the norms that will be set in our society is a reflection, you know, of the fact that women are 51% of the population and that the children have gone through a lot of suffering during this conflict. And we must begin right away. We cannot postpone protection of women and children until we are completely free. Because the kind of Amazonia we intend to, to set uh, we must begin with ideas and practices at this particular moment as a reflection of that of that vision so thank you people for the hard work and on behalf of all the great ladies and, and gentlemen who took part in the drafting of this charter i send my uh, best wishes to them and and thank to the secretary of uh, human rights and humanitarian affair uh, comrade akosong for overseeing this uh, process all right, uh, fellow Amazonians, uh, thank you very much for bearing my almost one hour of discussion. Uh, your country is real. The enemy is the beast. It must be thrown out as far as possible and a buffer zone created to make sure that Cameroon never again has the opportunity to inflict pain on us. And this is going to be a long struggle, as I said, we must be ready we must dig in in our heels to ensure that we can finally prevail and establish our own country we will have our schisms our quarrels but it's our quarrel let's quarrel as amazonians for all of those traitors who take pride in treachery you will go down in history as the worst breed of people who ever step food in our land. And I hear the governor of uh, the colonial governor is asking people to, to use a foreign number plate. I dare the colonial governor and all his administrators to use the CA number plate. They cannot throw away the CA for fear of being arrested and they want to force you to using a, a foreign number plate. We will continue with our bilateral discussions with other movements. We will continue consultations on issues of harmonizing our defense strategies. We will continue on the issue of discussing about the forthcoming uh, school year. We've made it absolutely clear that independence means independence. There will be no foreign school without the permission of Amazonian authority. There will be no wearing of any La Republic uh, paraphernalia, no flag of La Republic, no anthem across the territory of Amazonia. I don't think Sweden can cross into the United Kingdom and just build a school illegally and begin instituting a Swedish curriculum. The caterpillars will move there immediately and dig that school from the foundation. We will not tolerate any school overseen by Cameroon. I know it's going to be a difficult transition. Uh, people have always asked about certification. All the certificates we got from Cameroon are useless. They have no use. Acquire knowledge. We are going to make up catch up programs for those who have lost years. But we can assure every Amazonian that you will get the best education. You will be equipped with the knowledge to be able to meet up with the economic challenges and opportunities of your time. All the certificates, first school living certificate, have no use. O level had no use. A level had no use. You studied chemistry, you ended up in Europe doing something else. You did mathematics, you ended up as a bricklayer. 
Those things are useless and we must put them in the dustbin of history and be brave enough to sacrifice to establish something that we can take pride in. Thank you very much. And to our brave soldiers, we will continue to arm you. I ask our people to commit to the arming of our, of our citizens. Ambazonia's existence is threatened and the world must come to our support in balancing the, the might of, 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 of Cameroon. Next week, I will be leading a, a resource mobilization for our forces. I, I call upon all of you to provide me with your support, your trust. I'll be knocking on doors. I'll be in street corners ensuring that you can commit so we can support our forces. God bless Ambazonia. God protect all of you and give you the tenacity, the wisdom, and the courage never to blame.